Good evening, bowlers. Welcome to the 27th episode of The Step Back. 27, Vlad Guerrero, Mike Trout, Daniel Tice, kick in the face episode. <laughs> he was trying to kick something. <laughs> Sweet chin music right across the neck. <laughs> uh, man, it's your host, Leon Tompkins, my main man, Jacob Moses. Uh, coming to you live again this week, recapping another week in the playoffs. How you feeling this week, bro? I am doing well. I was waiting for this episode. We got a, you know, we got some good things going on. I'm let you take that and what we're gonna be covering. But we got some spicy stuff going on in the bubble. <laughs> Daniel House did it, but he got kicked. He was trying to kick game. He went to the Lou Williams School of doing something he wasn't supposed to, but uh. Yeah, this is going to be a good one. I'm feeling good, though. How you feeling down there? Uh, you know, I'm feeling good, man. Uh, we know school starting back up pretty soon uh, down here and whatnot. So oh, yeah. uh, just moving along in a bubble, moving along in this world, just trying to remain COVID-free. But yes, sir. you're right. Uh, I, I am excited. Um, we, right off when we left last week, <clears throat> got a surprise announcement of Steve Nash being named the Brooklyn Nets head coach. So I got my Brooklyn jersey on. Proud to be a fan. Um, got some renewed uh, some re- rejuvenation. You know, we, this hire came out of left field. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm real excited for it. You know, we, we, talk, we spoke before about when uh, Kenny Atkinson got fired and we made the comparison to Mark Jackson and Steve Kerr. Mm-hmm. You know, I see it as Steve Kerr 2.0. Other see as Jason Kidd, um, but you know I'm I'm really excited to see where this goes. We had a huge press conference today. We had a watch party in the group. Um, answer some questions. Didn't answer some questions. Uh, but um, like I said, I'm, I'm I'm really excited for what is to come. He's a brilliant basketball mind. Uh, I know he has no head coaching experience on any assistant level. Um, he was a consultant with KD for a few years in Golden State, so you know he has that relationship. He has a relationship mm-hmm. with Kyrie, which is somebody Kyrie cannot talk down to. So, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, he, he's been with Don Nelson, Mike D'Antoni. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the offense is going to come. I'm, I'm really excited to see what happens here. Uh, what's your take on, uh, on what, what Brooklyn's doing? I used to like Steve Nash. He was, he was the man. <laughs> now, now, now I'm going to say you should have had one of your MVPs taken away. So you all know who got cheated. No, I'm kidding. But no, I think it was a good hire. I'm not going to front. Um, you know, he actually had coaching experience. Well, a little bit of head coaching experience with the Canadian national team. Mm-hmm. So, um, and plus, you know, he's good friends with Sean Marks. So he kind of, I'm pretty sure he knew the ins and out of the business. Uh, also, he's well respected, one of the best point guards ever. You know, he just coming out of Santa Clara, never knew who he was. Then he blew up when he got to the league. Him and Dirk had magic going with that Mavericks team. Um, like you said, great mind, great team guy. I actually it came out of it was actually a good hire. You can't really, you know, say it was either a bad or really good one. I it, it's right in the middle for me, but like I said, it's. I like it. I like it for them. And more of it, I think it was a KD hire. You see, like, they calling the shots already. But like you said, Kyrie really can't talk down to him because, you know, he's been there. He's been the lead point. He knows what to do. So just follow his lead. Your guys got the talent. You know, now just put it together. I, I can see you guys being Eastern Conference finals kind of team next year. Hands down. But I like it. Yeah, yeah, I, I I agree. And you know, Stephen A. came out with some comments and whatnot, saying you know, uh, with the white privilege and skipping the line and so on and so forth. I mean, I I could see the skipping the line part, you know. But you have to imagine how long this deal might have been in the works, you mm-hmm. know, to come from nowhere and get a job like this. I, I could see where there'd be some resentment mm-hmm. like with guys like uh, Mark Jackson and 
Tyron Lu and 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 others who've been in the game, but really, I don't know if they were waiting for their spot or if you're looking for a, a completely new hire who might have been. Uh, grinding through the ranks such as Sam Cassell or uh, Becky Hammond. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of other coaches have been hired out of the blue with no experience. They just haven't had a loaded roster. Um, mm-hmm. You look at, at Atlanta down in Atlanta, Lloyd Pierce got the job there. And mm-hmm. uh, David Fisdale, granted, he came from Memphis, a uh, uh, playoff running team went to the Knicks and just didn't, you know, was handed a bad roster. But mm-hmm. I, I don't see a case of white privilege here. I, I I just think it was a prior relationship with KD and Kyrie that really set exactly. this thing in motion. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I can't really, yeah, I'm not a fan of that. Because we had so many, you know, the Mark Jacksons of the world. You know, he had a loaded team. What happened? Mm-hmm. I really think it was just – his life off the court, which really got him, you know, Mike Woodson, he had a nice team with the Knicks. You know, mm-hmm. it's not like he had a bum team. Um, you know, Doc Rivers, um, don't you see that? Uh, what, who was he coaching? That team in the West? Mm-hmm. Kawhi? Yeah. PG? Yeah. Let's not get that twisted. Um, I mean, it's a lot of, it's a lot of coaches. We, we get a lot of jobs out there. It's, you can't really fault the guy. It's all about the relationship he had with Sean Marks, KD, and Kyrie. It's that's all that is right there. Stephen Smith, Stephen A. was just kind of he was out of pocket for that one. He, come on, you're a journalist. Do your research, there, guy. And yeah, I'm not a I'm not a fan of that. I'm usually for that kind of stuff, and you can kind of get a feeling of it, but not on right. this one. It was just his relationship. Uh, what do you make of anything uh, Byron Scott had to say? And you know he he's been through the ringer as well. First off, then you have LeBron in your team. Am I am I wrong? Wasn't he wasn't he coaching the best player in the league? I, I, can I be? Well, let's check right quick. Yeah, he should be the last one talking because it wasn't he you know coach of a Lakers team that well it was supposed to be you know good and it just didn't work out. But yeah, he need to right. sit his ass down and shut up for that one because stop when you got LeBron in your team it's you kind of just you can't really say anything. Your opinion is kind of void. Just not a fan of that one. Another one out of pocket. And yeah, just stop it, five. Just, <laughs> just, just stop. <laughs> like, like Mike Brown got hired and fired twice. Jason mm-hmm. Kidd had no experience, and he got two loaded. I mean, one wasn't really loaded, mm-hmm. but he, Jason Kidd got two opportunities. I, I, I really don't see where the privilege would come in. Now, the only person I could see making an argument is Jacques Vaughn. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because he was – they were good under him. You know, they played well in the bubble, so there really wasn't any excuse not to give him the job because they responded mm-hmm. to him well. Well, he had a bare minimum, and they got there. You know, they could have easily just – rolled it in and said, forget it. We're not going anywhere anyway. We have our stars coming. Let's play for next year. No, they buckled down. Karras came out to play. You had guys like Cavaro come out. Joe Harris, you know, still there. Jared Allen showed a little bit more par- progress. Um, you had guys like, what's the guy, what's the kid from Florida? I like um, uh, Chioza. Yes, Chioza. You had him coming out playing. I mean, he, he looked like a freaking point guard whisperer too. Yeah. on that floor was falling out, man. So you can't credit to Jock Vaughn. You can't discredit what he did. He definitely showed that he's going to be a valuable coach in the league again because I think I'm pretty sure he coached Orlando at some point. Yeah, and, and, and Orlando had a terrible roster. Yeah, so you can't really – but like I said, it's, you knowing the right people. Like even Steve Nash said he kind of skipped the line, but it was pretty much credit to his relationships. It gets you yeah. – get you places knowing the right people at the right time yeah that, that's what all these coaching opportunities are right place right time you know who do you know and i, I found it interesting that apparently he, he was going to sign up dirk to be an assistant now hmm. I, I guess 
Now, my, my thing is, I guess if you're a head coach, you want to come in with your staff, and, mm -hmm. and that's cool. I'm glad, I'm glad Vaughn stayed, and it, take, it shows Vaughn's uh, uh, character as a person. Mm -hmm. But I guess to have a rookie head coach and a rookie assistant in this league with, granted, they're respected stars in their own rights, but as far as mm -hmm. in the coaching world, Mm -hmm. That would probably be a lot to ask um, with this with this team with championship aspirations. So, for sure, uh, I'm semi glad Dirk declined. So, well, it it would have been nice to see that connection in Brooklyn, but I, I don't I don't think it would have worked well mm -hmm. for this roster. Right, plus, it's such a small window too. So, you got about a three year window. So you gotta gotta do it now. And it was kind of a boom or bust move, and we're gonna see. But yeah, I, I liked everything I heard from the press conference. Uh, he said he wanted to be his own man and mm -hmm. um, just really linked with the, his playing style as far with the roster. So mm -hmm. it's going to be a long time till we see next season as they push the calendar back. But you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see what happens, man. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of that pushing back, though. Yeah, you, um, we mentioned it a bit last night in the in the post. Um, so it pushed the draft and the and the uh, combine back into October. Maybe November. Yeah, that that is a stretch, actually. Yeah. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, let's get this over with. You just push it back, pushing it back, and it shouldn't be that close to the season. If you're gonna, you know, if you're trying to start it, what do they say, Christmas? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think around Christmas. Okay. Well, yeah, don't don't push it back too far. You know, maybe beginning of November. You know, even freaking hockey push theirs up. Yeah, I know you and hockey, but um, <laughs> but but yeah, they they push theirs up. I'm not saying push you know NBA up, but just keep it, you know, next month. Just let these kids figure out what they want to do and rock with it that way. But. Here, I'll, I'll play a little devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I always thought that the schedule should start at Christmas because that's when most, you know, fans usually start paying attention. You know, around Christmas time, you get the Christmas triple header, quadruple header. Mm -hmm. I, I figured that's probably the best way to start the season. Mm -hmm. And if you condense it to within 66 games, as mm -hmm. uh, good friend John Gray mentioned, the toys. Yeah. <laughs> well, those are some nice toys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you push it to 66 games, and there's talk of them having the regional bubbles. Mm -hmm. so you can probably have, you know, three cities, 20 games each, 21, uh, 20, 22 games each mm -hmm. in three cities. And then that's, that's the best way to reset the clock back to, I guess, if they wanted to go back to an October start. Mm -hmm. But I, I I think I can see your point as far as Christmas and, and the draft pushing everything back with these with these rookies and these and these teams haven't played in about eight months. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a lot to ask. It's a lot to ask. Yeah, for sure. I'm I'm just trying to figure out what's the you know the point of doing that. But like I said, maybe it's, there's a reason we don't know about. And, you know, our pod jobbers, compadre, Jake said, you know, you're going to see, by the way, just going back to the whole Steve Ness thing, you're going to see coaches hire quickly and more consistently. Player coaches, I can I can see that. You know, you have been seeing it, you know, former players coming back into coaching because they have that experience on the floor and it could translate into wins depending on the squad that you get. You know, thanks, Jake, for that one. And he asked, do you think the delay in the draft will have an effect on players' stock? Me, personally, I, the, I'd say the late-round guys. You know, if you're lottery pick one of maybe 10, mm -hmm. you know who you – we pretty much know who's going, like the Lamella Ball, the James Wiseman, the Anthony Edwards, the Denny's, the Obi Toppins, guys like that. You already know they're going to be top 10. But – other than that, you know, once you get there, it gets murky, you know, the Cole Anthony's because he had such a up and down year and UNC, you don't know what you're going to get out of him. 
you know, but and you know, your combines that helps. You're like, okay, this kid maybe he's starting to turn the corner, but now you don't know because it's just, you know, you what are you gonna do? Zoom, zoom freaking you know, like Zoom meetings like, and Zoom workouts. Yeah, yeah. Do, yeah. do a push up over here. Do do, uh, <laughs> do five, yeah, do five pull ups for me. Uh, <laughs> Let's see your vertical. Go go out there and you hooping. See how far you can jump. But yeah, that was a good question, Jake. Thank you for that. But yeah, it's gonna get real interesting now. Scouting is gonna loom large here, and you're and that's when I go back to the Knicks. They got a whole bunch. They finally got it when it came to mm-hmm. getting good scouts, doing that stuff. You need these guys to come in, and like the Nets. Karis LeVert, Jared Allen, they did their research. Sean Marks did his homework, and now look at it. They have to start looking at this. Like, hey, look all these teams, the Suns, you know, the Nuggets, with great scouting. And mm-hmm. this is going to come down to who does it better. And that's where you're going to find the stars. They said it's not a loaded draft, but you can still find guys that can contribute in this draft. So we will see on that one. Yeah, I, I do see a lot of role players in this draft, a lot of specialty shooters, a lot of rebounders. And those guys have, I mean, they have draft on a, a role on a team, but they're useful as far as trade chips as well. So For sure, as, as long as you have the proper development, and I'm, and I'm pretty sure the, uh, the G League uh, will be back up by then as well. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's going to be a big – that's a good one for these kids. Let them go to the G League. You know, and I think that's where the Knicks kind of faltered as well when it comes to a player like Kevin Knox. You know, he was sitting, he would play, you know, 15, 20 minutes one game, and then you wouldn't see him the next three. Let him get his 30 minutes down in the G League. You know, a lot of teams mm-hmm. have done it. They've, you know, used that G League to the fullest, and look what happened. But once again, use your resources. They can help you in the long run. Facts. Um, some awards were given out uh, over the past week. Uh, Montrez Harrell, name is six man of the year. You know, I kind of got that one wrong. <laughs> um, you know, two Clippers and Dennis Schroeder. I, I, I knew Schroeder didn't have a chance, but, you know, congrats to Harrell. Mm-hmm. You know, played play real well this year. Um, apparently he lost his grandmother during the uh, – before the entry of the bubble. So mm-hmm. that's what caused him to miss a couple of weeks in the mm-hmm. beginning of the restart. But, mm-hmm. you know, congrats to him. Um, congrats to John Morant, rookie of the year. Easy but Yeah, I'm, I'm glad they got that one. Mm-hmm. You know, it ain't go media bias. And yes, Jake, I do not like the six man movie. I, I thought it was completely cheesy. Smack the shit out of you saying that. <laughs> it is. Oh my god! Oh, don't get me started. That's, that was man. I'm telling you, you got a, you get emotional when he look up and he just tell. That's our six yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, coach. That that right there, right? It was it's kind of powerful right there, man. You felt yeah, that? Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I get that. You got the whole angel and all that. Uh, on no nah, man. It's, it's, when you got the ball like the, just guiding it in. Nah, man. It was kind of like the black angels in outfield. Looks just more. I, you I was know, just about to say that. More budgeted. It was exactly what it was, just a little bit more, you know, low budgeted. <laughs> but yeah, no, I feel you. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't for everybody, but I like it. Like most basketball movies, I can't watch because I just like it. I just like it. I like basketball movies, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stuff like I mean, Air I Bud. Guess, yeah, Air Bud. Nah, I would fuck with that. No, nah, we're not doing that. <laughs> fuck that damn dog. <laughs> no way in hell that dog can make more baskets than me. That's a. <laughs> And they made a sequel. <laughs> Fuck out of here, coach. <laughs> oh, man, but John Morant, uh, rookie of the year. Uh, I'm surprised he wasn't unanimous. Um, but, you know, Ja uses a fuel for next year mm-hmm. for, uh, for the voters. Kendrick Nunn got second place. And, uh, you know, congrats to him. It was a good run by Memphis. Um, sure. Really, really. Uh, running some tough luck with uh, Jaron Jackson coming out, mm-hmm. but they got a bright future coming. For real, Brandon Clark, you know, Grayson Trippin Allen. Um, <laughs> oh man, they they got you know Melton. They got they got a good shooters there. Good young team. Mm-hmm. 
I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do in the West. But yeah, good point on that one. Who else? What else? Yeah. Uh, real, real, real quick. Uh, score update: uh, Toronto leading Boston, 76-69. About three mm-hmm. minutes left in the third quarter. So okay. they were down at halftime. Uh, they're starting to turn it on now. Uh, Boston leads the series 3-2, looking to force a game seven, uh, looking to face the Miami Heat. Uh, mm-hmm. That was good, good series win by them. You know, we, we, I, mean, I can't say we, we knew they were good, but uh, we got to give credit to Randy, his guy, you know, guy at the Audible, mm-hmm. multi-talented called the Miami Heat sleepers way back when and they, they proved it. Absolutely. Hollywood, you know, yeah. leading the way. All Daddy taught was Jumpers Robinson. All Daddy taught was to be a hero, Tyler. But um, it's actually it's good to see these kids running and, you know, gunning. And mm-hmm. Miami, shout out to Jaden. We see you. He was over there in the comments. You know, Jake, 305, they're yeah, they representing right now. Let's see what they can do. You know, they got mm-hmm. past the, you know, the Bucks and the MVP, to be honest. Um, and I use that lo- loosely. <laughs> but, yeah, they put it on them, though. There was nothing they really can do. And Miami's looking, they looking like they can come out of the East, man. Let's, can't sleep on them right now. Yeah, man. South Beach Jimmy forcing Marvin to retire. Kyle Corbin might be right behind them. So um, we're going to get into that series in a little bit. Mm-hmm. But uh, one, one more award, uh, a couple more awards that were given out. The uh, all, def- first, all defensive teams, mm-hmm. uh, Giannis, no, yeah, no, yeah, Giannis, AD, Ben Simmons, Marcus Smart, and Rudy Gobert, name of the first team, all defense. Mm-hmm. Um, that all makes sense. Marcus Smart is, I mean, he could be, mm-hmm. Defensive player of the year every year be you know ever considered guards. Mm-hmm. He's a dog, like seriously, <laughs> like, he will dig up into you. And man, he's just watching him go from Oklahoma State to now. He has improved vastly on the just defense. You knew he was defensively gifted, but mm-hmm. his shooting, it's it's there. So. You know, Boston, another one that just they know they know how to get pick their players, and they're gonna be they're gonna be you know a good team for a long time if they keep them around, everybody around. Well, shit, they had a lot of picks from Brooklyn, so you know we get half the credit. Yeah, y'all should, man. Y'all give up everybody, Lillard. I mean, y'all just the gift that keeps on giving. I think some like said Smart was that might have been their pick. Tate, well, Tatum might have could have been y'all pick or something like that. I I think definitely uh, Tatum definitely was. I'm not sure about smart though. Well, y'all just but, what? I thought the next one. We, we, so. Yeah, we, we won't relive that. That's just we're, we're looking toward the future. Steve Nash, tunnel vision. <laughs> Two new, new guests, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Wait, All yeah, defensive. Um, mm-hmm. Second. Uh, uh, yeah. Second team, Kawhi, Brooke Lopez, Bam Adebayo, Pat Bev, and Eric Bledsoe. Time out. Time, time, time. Flag on the play. Mom, did you just say Brooke? I mean, Brooke Doof Lopez. I, what? Wow. Not, man, I got to give it up to him. All, all I had to do, leave the Nets and the defense. Shout out no, to you mean, you mean You mean leave the Lakers? Well, that too. Oh yeah, I forgot he was there. They defense and Lakers just don't go together. But um, yeah, man, shout out to him. He's made strides. I I give him that. He's still flat footed as hell, but he knows how to make it work. Yeah, man. If he just stop shooting those goddamn threes all the time. Um, yeah. <laughs> but you know, credit to him. He's been a presence in the paint for a while, but you always you also see him a lot uh, on dunk highlights as being a recipient <laughs> of. Uh, some facial, so mm-hmm. it, it's nice to see him get uh, some recognition one time on the positive side. Uh, so congrats to him, defensive, uh, all defense, second team. For one time. One time. <laughs> yes, I bet. 
we left you last week, um, right in the middle of, right before game seven of the Thunder and the Rockets. It was one hell of a game. It was poorly executed down the stretch. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, credit credit to the Thunder, because, I mean, well, credit to the Rockets as well, because Harden was well off. But like we've been saying all uh, throughout the bubble, number one rated defense. And James Harden, much maligned for his offense, and he was god off in game seven. Mm-hmm. Day for day on defense. And we, we talked about that. Man. He's, and we discussed it how he's, I think he's an underrated defender. He has really quick hands when he actually is in front of you. And that has to be noticed, man. That, I give him credit for that. He kind of, he took a step back on offense, but hey. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Dort! And, and this game, yeah, man, Lou Dort. <laughs> he, he was pretty good defensively on hard in all series, but mm-hmm. his three-point shooting for game seven was on point. It mm-hmm. it kept uh, OKC in the game. And, you know, you, you look here, you see P.J. Tucker missed on the three. We, so mm-hmm. we picked it up here. Houston up by two, and they missed a layup. Um, <laughs> the, the big three-pointer here in the corner by uh, Gilgis Alexander to give him the lead, go up by one. I, I thought I thought the Thunder were taking this game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then, you know, P.J. I used to call him P.J. Corner Tucker with the floater. <laughs> I give him the, he's always in the corner. But, yeah, they definitely – it was a back-and-forth game. It was a joy to watch. I mean – Man, it's definitely a good game. It was just a lot of hustle and everybody diving down. Both of them wanted it, but, you know, it loomed large. Having certain stars on your team kind of helps. Yeah, man. And, and this, is the, this is the stretch right here where um, uh, Gordon grabs the rebound, gets to half court. You see Paul flopping, and then Adams mm-hmm. catches the steal. Paul gets it. Harden flops, and he missed that floater. That's a mm-hmm. that's a shot CP3 usually makes in the sleep, and that would have gave mm-hmm. us under the lead. Now we get down here under you know 20 seconds. Um, mm-hmm. you know, they get here, Paul gets the ball deflected, and they get to Lou Dort, where mm-hmm. Harden makes a block of the year, and yeah. not to mention the block, but the presence of mind to not have the ball hit him on the bounds. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Play Jimmy. I'm talking about. Well, look at that. Yeah, look at that. Woo. Okay. See? That was it right there, man. You gotta you gotta respect that. Can't sleep on Houston. Ro man, you can't sleep on that Roco, you know. Yeah, Definitely. this is weird. So he, he makes the first free throw, misses the second. Mm-hmm. I think he did that and purposely. Yeah, look how he shot it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this is where it gets a little weird because during this stretch, what's not mentioned in this this, uh, video highlight here was the foul they had um, off away from the ball. Mm -hmm. And Gallinari goes to the line, makes one out of two. No, he he missed the he missed the free throw. So so it's still a two point game. Mm -hmm. They go back to try to inbound again. And Steven Adams, I'm yelling at the screen. There's mm-hmm. nobody between Steven Adams and the basket. All I had to do was lob it in. Not once, mm-hmm. twice. And then they had Steven Adams come out for the three, mm-hmm. for the three point line, and they never got a shot off, and the Thunder moves the series. I, I, I thought it was poor execution by the Thunder in the end. Mm-hmm. You see that a lot, though, in these, for some reason, in these critical games, players, they, I don't know, it seems like they don't, I know they do, but mm-hmm. they need to practice it more, like, especially for these situations, like you said, you right there, all you gotta do is lob it, man, just get it up there, like, the vision has to be better on those plays, but, you know, it's, I guess it wasn't meant to be, but, you know, the, the Thunder had chances, they had, it's not like they had no chance in the series, they, they had, they had, they had the game, they really did, and they just let it slip by with 
mismanaged freaking inbounding, which it can kill a team. So I say at the end of games, make or break your season, and it did. Yeah, it, it, it most definitely did. I mean, I still credit the Thunder for, for taking that team at two, two or seven game series. Uh, it, it also led to uh, Donovan and the Thunder parting ways. So there's going to be another open spot in, in OKC, and they got a load of draft picks coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, CP3 more than likely on his way out. Um, so the Thunder is a good situation, uh, probably for an up-and-coming coach. Mm -hmm. uh, Billy Donovan being rumored to Chicago, which is a bit surprising to me, but mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm not sure which candidates would be good for the Thunder. Maybe Atkinson, maybe Mark Jackson. I like Atkinson. I, I like that. Seeing what he's, you know, he did to the young Nets team, the Thunder. But who knows? CP3 might stay. You never know, man. That, that I wouldn't put it past him. Look what he, look what he's done. You get another piece in there. Like I said, even a DeRo I'm gonna say this name again, a DeRozan, or you can even. Well, no, you got Alexander. I wouldn't say Beal because you Alexander is there, so you can get like a no DeRozan maybe. They can it, just somebody yeah, else it, there. It, it yeah, they definitely need another piece. I, I think Gallinari is a free agent as well. Mm -hmm. um, but the Thunder still, with, with that loaded, uh, I mean, they have a bunch of draft picks from the Paul George trade. So, oh, yeah. Um, I, I could see, like, a first-time coach going there and, and, mm -hmm. and growing, have some growing pains with the team uh, because by, all, by most accounts, that Thunder team overachieved this year. Big time. You know who I would like to see, though? Like a Jerry Stackhouse. That would be real interesting to see. Uh, I want to see him get a mm -hmm. shot in the league. And we got a good question. Uh, we'll address it right quick. You know, try to address all the questions. Jake said, what team didn't make the playoffs this year? That would be a serious contender next year. Who are you thinking? Um, I, see, I thought it would have been this year, but mm. I, I'm a huge believer in the Atlanta Hawks. I like it. I like uh, it. Trey Young, Jen, John Collins, uh, Werther, you know, Red Rocket. <laughs> that team is, is young, they're fast, and John Collins missing 25 games in the beginning of the year really choked that big. team spirit. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I think Atlanta, they came on strong last year. They were one of the highest scoring teams in the league mm -hmm. um, towards the second half of the season. So I, I think they would be a uh, – a serious contender uh, coming in the next year. I like that. I'm going to go with the Phoenix Suns. Is they, I mean, you, <laughs> there's, there's nothing else you can do. You went, come on. <laughs> They're perfect, man. Mm -hmm. It was just, and they showed how much skill they had. They, Devin Booker showed he, that he's the superstar that they didn't have in a long time since, you know, Steve Nash and Amari Stoudemire kind of, player and I'm gonna go if they can get another piece to put along with him, you know, Ubre, Aiton, uh mm -hmm. it would be if they get that I like Rubio, but if you get that point guard that can really turn things up for them, Phoenix can make some noise, man. I'm definitely going with those boys from the desert. Shout out to Corey Decker. Yeah, um they had that uh shooter big man combo just like Atlanta does. So you, you know they're they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. Just like Aiton missed 25 games in the beginning of the year, and the Suns were one of the hottest teams in the beginning of the season. Aiton missed 25 and then came back, and you saw what they did in the bubble. They took out some elite teams. So mm -hmm. um, it's a good call on Phoenix. Um, I believe in Atlanta. And as far as the Warriors are concerned, I mean, they have Curry and Clay, so you can never count them out. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've said that off topic, you know, Never forget that they're still in the problems of their careers. And then they got, mm -hmm. you know, top two pick in the draft. You get like a big man. Even, you know who, everybody keeps saying, oh, they can trade for Embiid. No, you know what you do? You sign Whiteside. You put him right there as your center. And you're pretty much good to go. Look at that defense that between him, Green, him and Green. Clay's a mm -hmm. good defender too. I, I like that. I like a Whiteside to, you know, Golden State. You know, it's. 
like I said, yeah, yeah, I can definitely see Golden State. I just don't like mentioning them because it's like too easy of a choice. <laughs> because you're like, okay, I hear. You. But, but yeah, yeah like, they'll be back. We know. Yeah, you know, you know, been there, done that. We we know who they are. You, mm-hmm. You've seen enough of them. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, and, and you, you mentioned Jake. Those are some pretty good questions. We also left off um, last week's show with the Heat and the Bucks, and the game ending on a foul shot. Um, when we we left that game, we thought was well in hand uh, for, mm-hmm. for, the, for the Heat. Yeah, they got a seven point lead under two minutes ago, and it's right where we uh, left off. And you know, Tyler Hero in for the and one. I'm sorry, no, mm-hmm. uh, that was Giannis, who actually yep. scored in the fourth quarter, which uh, was shocking. Uh, mm-hmm. See Bam with the mid-range jumper. And, you know, Milwaukee made it a, a pretty competitive down the stretch because they, they usually wait until about under a minute to go to decide they want to start scoring. Mm-hmm. But, you know, but Milwaukee's yeah, defense definitely. during during this series was – was was weird to say the least. Um, I thought they were in trouble uh, against Orlando. I, I didn't think they came back to the bubble in the right frame of mind. They just felt like they were in cruise control, mm-hmm. and it, it just didn't it didn't it didn't feel right. Mm-mm. It's especially with that you gotta have another level when you get into these players bubble. No no bubble. You have to really you gotta turn it up, and they didn't. So I see. Giannis, you know, it all – remember when we kept talking about it, it has to come down to him trusting his teammates. I don't think he did it enough. He forced the shots a lot, especially going down the stretch. You just – you can't do that, especially as a star player. You got to – either you take over and make your buckets or you trust your teammates. But yeah, like you said, with this foul, I, man, I, I thought it was nonsense. But um, <laughs> I can't. Yeah. It is what it is. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I thought it was I thought it was terrible, but apparently the NBA said they were both fouls. Uh, the foul calls were correct. So, mm. uh, in that note, mm. Giannis de- definitely had a, had his hand on on his hip for the for mm. the last shot. Why he came over to double at that particular stage? Maybe it was a makeup for not guarding him in game one. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Because he guarded Jimmy down the stretch in game two, and still they mm-hmm. still lost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's – I don't know, man. <laughs> it's just – you knew Miami was good, but the Bucks just – they really just punished them <laughs> pretty much. It, it just – it didn't seem close. I know a few games were, but it just seemed like Miami just was in control the whole time. And yeah. Boston, they look more like an AC than a one seed. Yeah, and, you know, as much as people say, you know, Giannis needs help, I mean, Lopez gave him some help. Middleton gave him a lot of help at mm-hmm. uh, uh, game, three, game three and four. Mm-hmm. I think the biggest culprit was Bledsoe. Yep, I was just up to, yep, good call. He didn't do a damn thing. I think George Hill did more to him in the series than he did. I, I think sometimes the pride hits the coaches. Oh, yeah, Bledsoe's been here. He's on his new contract. No, if he's getting outplayed, put your better player in there. And George Hill, is he's battle-tested in the playoffs, too. I mean, you got to you gotta put guys in. You got to put them in there. Yeah, man. And, and what's also weird is that, you know, they, they treated Bledsoe like he was Westbrook or uh, Ben Simmons. They, like, allowed him to shoot. and. He never mm-hmm. did it. Nope. And he's a so decent here, here gonna, too. Yeah. Here we're going to pick up the action for game four. Uh, Brooke Lopez hit the shot in the corner for the three, and Milwaukee goes up by two mm-hmm. on about two and a half minutes to go. Uh, this is the game where uh, Giannis went out with the, with the ankle turn, had, what, 19 points and, like, 11 minutes. And then Middleton, showing why he's a max contract guy, just took over in the third quarter and willed this team to a, uh, 
to a win. I mean, mm-hmm. mid range threes facilitated, and it seems like the offense uh, was more spread out with Middleton on the floor. But mm-hmm. you know, it, it, it's a lot to ask not to have the defensive player of the year on the on the floor. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, well, yeah, this this Middleton, he definitely went to work. You know, nice mid-range jumper, contested, and earning that money. I, I was surprised he wasn't more aggressive, you know, <laughs> the first freaking three game. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, like, what happened, dude? Like, take your shot. And this shot, uh, like, that, man, these kids can just straight out just shoot. All yeah. of them. <laughs> Tyler Hero. Tyler mm. Hero, Jay Crowder, they, they were just blowing. I mean, mm. Middleton with the three to two to put the ice on the cake and mm-hmm. give them the only game of the series. But it, it just leads to a lot of questions for the Bucks. Uh mm-hmm. Holzer, Giannis didn't play more than 30 minutes um in any game in this series. Um mm-hmm. and, and, and that's been throughout the whole series without I mean, the whole season, as far as Johnny mm-hmm. is concerned. Why is the best player on the team not playing more than 30 minutes in a playoff game? Uh, man, I have no – there's no excuse for that. There's no such thing as maintenance when it comes to the playoffs, especially when you're the number one seed. You have to prove a point and why you were the number one seed. They didn't do that. Yeah, I don't know. You you just can't be able to do That's the one thing with Budenholzer. I – I think for some reason, I really think he did that in Atlanta. He kind of tried to space it out a little bit with his players and not just, Mm -hmm. I'm not saying run them into the ground, but, you know, you got to play. You play to win, man. You play to win the game. It's it's not freaking simple. Simple question, simple answer. (laughs) I mean, yeah. It's. And like Milwaukee's a deep team. So, you can understand why a lot of these players go less than, mm-hmm. you know, 30 Who's minutes, but mm-hmm. you, you can't have the star players in elimination games, crucial games, play under 30 minutes. And when we said it before in the Orlando series, it, it appears like mm-hmm. Giannis just disappears in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Well, for some reason he and because he thinks basically what's going to work in quarters one through three is going to work in quarter four as going down, you know, taking your three steps, getting into the lane. No, they're going to trap you, buddy. You got to, you got to start using your vision to catch your guys on the corner. You know, you usually have, you know, Brooke usually drifts out to the corner three anyway. So you got to catch him Mm -hmm. or Middleton or somebody out there. And it's not like you don't have good shooters out there. And he, for some reason, he doesn't trust his teammates and, once again, it bit him. Yeah, I mean, and he's doing a defensive favor when he's shooting threes. He was 0 for 7 from three-point range. I mean, it's not going to it, it, not going to work. That ain't it, bro. <laughs> it's not you. Quick, quick update. Boston did take the lead uh, in the fourth quarter here. About under eight minutes to go. They're up by 189-88. Uh, mm-hmm. Toronto trying to force a game seven. Um, and back to Giannis, I, I, yeah, he said immediately after the game, he's going to stay in Milwaukee. He's not looking for a trade, although we've heard that story before. Now, this is where I come in with a bold, bold take. If there was one time, if there was one time Brooklyn can trade his assets, it's for Giannis. You can trade Levert, you can trade Denwitty, you can trade Jared Allen if needed. If Giannis is that third star, that's the chip you use all your assets on. You create that Kyrie, KD, Giannis scenario. If there's ever a time to do it, that's the time to do it. I like that. I like that take. It's like you can just throw, you know, Claxton in there. He's a big body developing mm-hmm. so you can use him and you know maybe try that's when you try to get joe harris back on the cheap 
And yeah, I like that take. That that would be real interesting. You give you give them a bunch of young guys that can grow. And then maybe, you know, when Brooke is gone, you definitely could slide Allen back in there. But yeah, that's Levert would be there. He's shown that he can take a team, you know, to the playoffs. So yeah, I like that take. I yeah, I can see him staying there and you know, I don't want to be traded. Yeah, you don't want to be traded. So it's called free agencies the next year. So of course you can talk that now. Yeah. But yeah, he he's not saying anymore. Especially if they do the same thing next year, he'd be a damn it, fool to say. Yeah, it, it's hard to take that um, early exit two years in a row, mm-hmm. and you know it, it's almost insanity to expect something different. But I mean, credit to Giannis if he's willing to stay. Oh yeah, I, I always respect players that want to stay with the team that drafted them, and you know build something with the team because you don't. You don't really see it a lot, you know. You don't see the Dirks anymore, the Kobe's, and guys that just, you know, they stick it out and then they build around them. It's always, you know, I want to be, I want to, I want to go, and it's not working. Let's say shout out to like Mitchell and guys like that. Like, listen, yep, I'm here. Mm-hmm. We're gonna, we're gonna make it work, and let's, let's win. But we'll see what, we'll see what Giannis lies after next year. I'm not gonna really take anything into consideration, but yeah, I like that trade scenario. That would be. Talk about a blockbuster. I'll just, yeah, I'll definitely say y'all guys in the finals. Yeah, I mean, it, it's almost hard not to, but, you know, uh, one step at a time. I'm, I I think if – and like I said, if there's any way to trade – if there's any time to trade those chips, it's for that caliber of a player. Mm-hmm. You know. For sure. Um, so Toronto took the lead. Uh, 94-89, about six minutes to go. Um, again, for trying to force a game seven, and we're gonna get into this series here. Uh, the Bucks, I'm sorry, not the, the Raptors and the Celtics. Um, Toronto still feel like they're they were sleepwalking throughout the series. OG and Anobi saved them. Kyle Lowry turned it into a 80 sitcom. Uh, well, <laughs> that was great. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was it was good though. It was good. It was good. Um, oh man, but yeah, definitely it. That was once again. Why wasn't anybody? I don't know. Just what happened to the five on five guard, your man? You know, Chris. You know, boy, man, we talked about it for a little bit, and he just said, "Why don't you, you know, play the old school? Get on your man. And you stay on your man." And he was wide open <laughs> for some reason. Wide open, you pretty much gave him a game, and just I don't know. I'm just not a fan of leaving anybody open. I don't care who it is. Yeah, man. Three o two one is a huge difference, and that would have mm-hmm. more or less killed their confidence. Um, we go right in here to game three. We would mm-hmm. pick it up. Three minutes to go. Boston up by two. Marcus Smart's been playing well all series. Very. And, you know, Jalen Brown, Kemba, you know, the trio uh, with uh, Tatum mm-hmm. really dominated in this series. Um, Toronto's still thinking it's Brooklyn. Siakam, <laughs> I, I got to see more out of him. Mm-hmm. It, 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 and I, I thought I, I, I'd see a lot more from this team because Saul was giving them absolutely nothing. Nothing. He fouled out the other night, had four points. Um, it was a nice dime by Kemba, actually, to, for the, look, to look, the lead. And look at this defense. Look, see? Uh, see? Wait, what? what? Oh, let me take this one. Let me get this. You got tight. Like, even Tyson, he's like, listen, why are you standing? <laughs> why are you standing with him? I think it was Jalen Brown that missed his assignment. But why are you standing right next to Daniel Tice? There's no reason for that. That, that was horrible. And then you you got family mad. I was just about to go. I caught that cheesy ass one. That was good. That was a moment though. But, um, was, <laughs> the bubble's been filled with moments, and it was just another one. But that was great. But yeah, that blown assignment that can't happen. Got to know where you are on the floor defensively at all times. Yeah, like Tyson, like why are you standing next to me? Your man's over there. <laughs> He did the LeBron. <laughs> I 
Exactly. You got oh, Kyle Larry. You know, it, it, it's almost like, you know, you ride your roller coasters and you learn where all the cameras are. So you time your smile. <laughs> you time your smile with the with the camera. Uh -huh. If you got the flash going, you, mm -hmm. you get them real fast. So um, mm -hmm. Toronto stole a game. I'll they're, they're up by four now, hoping to fourth mm -hmm. the game seven. And Kemba Walker's one for seven in, in, in this game here. He has three points. So um, mm -hmm. it's been a it's been a hit or miss for Kemba in the series. He's either been really good or really bad. But mm -hmm. um, they've shut down Kyle Lowry for the most part in this series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just I want Boston to win. I want to see a Miami. But that you talk about exciting young stars all over the place. You know, with vets. And I mean, this this will be a really good series. No slight to Toronto, but I don't want to see that shit. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna let's keep it real, but yeah, I would rather want to see Boston. I think they match up a little bit better, you mm -hmm. know, talent wise and everything. But um, Toronto's been fighting, man. They you talk about a heart of a champion, they're showing it right now, and you know, they looking forward to like they're looking to force a game seven. And if they do, they do. But Boston, if they happen to lose the series, disappointment because I thought they have a big chance to come out of the east. They are my pick to come out of the East. Yeah. Um, it was just me and Toronto woke up and either Boston got really cold or Toronto decided, you know, coaching adjustments and, and Siakam and Gasol decided to play. Mm -hmm. So, then again, I, I wouldn't be opposed to another game seven. No, absolutely not. Um, if it happens. I, love I had Toronto in six. That obviously can't happen now, so I got to go Toronto in seven. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Hey, it happens, man. Um, <laughs> um, another oh. series real interesting to me, the Lakers and the Rockets. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your take on the Lakers and Rockets series? Lakers I, actually... Ones. Actually, this has been good. <laughs> the teams have been going back and forth. You know, um, you know, Rockets stole the first game, but you knew Lakers would come back. Like LeBron said, you know, that's usually their feeling out game. They see where everything mm -hmm. is. They see the assignments, watch what they do. They make their adjustments. They did. Um, and once again, people, LeBron is showing his greatness. You can hate him all you want. <laughs> Most playoff victories. Who's there? LeBron James. But um, yeah, it's he's going to grow it. It's going to keep happening. You can say three and six all you want, but his numbers don't lie. And mm -hmm. even hard, Harden's his offensive game came back around. You got, you know, guys like House and Westbrook. All right, let me say a few things on Westbrook. He needs to slow it down. I mean, just be a playmaker, be the triple-double Russ I don't know what the hell he's doing on the court half of the time. He just runs and he's falling all over himself. Dude, come on. You got James Harden there. You you got – you running that, what, five-out, you said, the system they run? Mm -hmm. You run that five-out system. You got shooters. It's not like you – OKC, where you might have shooters. There. You got corner Tucker. You got Covington, Rocco. He can shoot. You know, of course, Harden can shoot. And he's, a, you know, step in and stop taking those 30-footers. It ain't – it ain't stop. Um, you know, everybody on that lineup can shoot. Just trust your teammates once again to come back to that. Trust your teammates and stop trying to play hero ball. This is what got you in trouble with no KC. You can't play hero ball. You gotta gotta dish it out when you have to. But the Lakers, um, they're shown by one of the best teams in the West, and LeBron's being you know LeBron's being LeBron, and AD is just reveling in it right now because you know he's now never been this far in the playoffs, so he's He's making mm -hmm. it what to do. He's making it happen. Yeah, and the Rockets 5L system has been working well, and we mm -hmm. said the kryptonite to it would be a strong center, and mm -hmm. AD is showing to be that kryptonite because mm -hmm. he's going in the block. P.J. Tucker shut him out the first game, mm -hmm. and then that, that's been it. AD has been able to get wherever he wants, wherever he wants, on the mm -hmm. floor, and – LeBron in year 17 is putting down posters on Westbrook. <laughs> putting posters on Westbrook, catching the alleys from any area code. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
my man is like touching the top of the backboard. You you forget what year he's in. Yeah, um, it's it's crazy, man. <laughs> it 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 really is wild. Yeah, one of those players, and, people not gonna appreciate him. Mm-hmm. Yep, until he's gone. Uh, um, but mm-hmm. last night, game three, I was I was real uh, uh, impressed with the performances from Markeith Morris and Ray John Rondo. Rondo knocked down three threes yes. last night. He went three or five from the three-point line, um, hit one at the end of the shot clock. So Rondo coming back in the form after missing so much time. Um, we all know about his, you know, broken jump shot, or so to say, and he came through <laughs> in the clutch with his playoff pedigree and mm-hmm. knocked down some jumpers. Mm-hmm. Rondo is pretty important for this squad, man. He's it takes the pressure off LeBron having to handle the ball because Rondo knows what he's doing, and his defense is still there. You know, he's mm-hmm. he shows that toughness. You know, he's the kind of guy he'll get into you, he'll get you off your game. And Marquise Morris, like you said, I I expect the damn thing out of him. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, and he he made it do what it do, and he definitely attributed to that. But the Lakers, they're looking to take control. I honestly think they will. I think they got the their little ingredients to beat this team, to beat the Rocket team. Because, and this is where I think not having Capella is going to come to bite them in this series, because he can, you know, he had a big body. He he can put something on Anthony Davis to make it tough for him. PJ Tucker, you can only be just a tough guy, but you can still get buckets dropped on you. And right. he's showing that now. <laughs> that yeah, I I don't see Tyson Chandler coming to save them. Um, Daniel House being suspended, oh, yeah. it's gonna hurt. But Jeff Green has really played well. Um, he's like turning back the clock on me for some reason. So mm-hmm. you know, credit to him. But uh, I don't see the Rockets winning another game in this series. I mean, they might squeak one out, but uh, it's yeah, it's not looking likely. Man, maybe they need Tyson Chandler. I mean, put a big body in there or something. All I see him, that's all I see Chandler doing. That I, <laughs> damn, he ever get in the game anymore? I I've not seen him in the game. What what's the point oh. of it? What's what's the point of having these big bodies on the floor, man? Just get in there to jack somebody up. Something I don't know, man. Get some quick fouls no. or I. Yeah, I mean, that, that's only be good for is, is fouls. That's fine. I, mean, I guess maybe you can get up there for alley or something. But man, use your big bodies. So I don't. I don't. I don't get it. Man. But yeah, like you said, shout out to Jeff Green. You know, former Hoyer. He's looking like he's up there. He's getting up there, hitting his jumpers, looking like he's back in college. But he's. It's always good to see him do well because after the heart issues, you you didn't think his career would go very far. But it's pretty awesome to see that. But this series is gonna come down to what Westbrook does. I think Harden. He's going to perform, but if Westbrook doesn't get on his game, they're barbecue chicken. Exactly. They need a productive Westbrook. They can't have him turn the ball over at crucial times and just go out of control. Mm-hmm. It's not good for him or the team. Um, you're absolutely right. This series hinges on Westbrook's play. Um, mm-hmm. Another quick update. Boston did tie the game up. Uh, they tied at 98, about under – Two mm-hmm. minutes to go. Um, we got a real good one here. We'll stay with you. Uh, watch along here as we continue our show. Um, we're going to go into the Clippers and the Nuggets. Um, th- th- this series is, is it's a bit wild to me. Um, I- I'm loving what uh, yeah. Jokic is doing. I'm, I'm loving what mm-hmm. Kawhi is doing. Denver doing what they usually do uh, in playoff time. It just blow huge leads. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Jamal Murray really suffered the uh, game three, went four of like eighteen, um, and then Kawhi had to like a wild block on him, but finger, the finger. Waited. Like what, man? 
I don't know what Jamal Murray was thinking. I mean, that dude, he really was trying. And <laughs> Kawhi was like, nah, you're not even touching the rim there, buddy. <laughs> Sorry. I ain't ended up on no poster. Access denied. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. No. You want some pancakes? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. But that was definitely man. Shout out to Kwa oh, for that man. one. That was good. But Denver Hopefully has a shot not... though, man. Yeah. You, you called Denver in seven. Uh, absolutely. It's under forty five seconds left. Uh Tatum just threw the ball out of bounds with the tice in the corner and they went to a timeout. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your screen is a, yeah, your screen's a bit behind me. Don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the update. Thank you. <laughs> well, yeah, um, yeah, that's another thing, Tatum. And we talked about that too. He needs to down the stretch. These young players need to know how to actually, you know, evaluate the game and not make, you know, unforced errors just like that. And you, you can't do it, especially critical times. You're trying to put a team like Toronto away. You can't make these mistakes. And case in point. Case in point, and. Lowry just live for these moments. Um, this is a chance to really, obviously, put the series away, but mm-hmm. and cut any momentum Toronto can can pick up for a game seven. Because as anybody mm-hmm. knows, it's a crapshoot as we've seen with these game sevens. Mm-hmm. You know, one roll of the ball, uh, uh, bounce of the ball, either way. Mm-hmm. Um, and Toronto's been in this before, where they benefited from a bounce. So absolutely, we all remember that. Shout out to Sandra. I know you remember that too. <laughs> Gun smoke. Shot fired. But yeah, oh, this man. Definitely, oh man, this is. <laughs> but yeah, this, uh, play, know, this well, bubble, man. Yeah, this, this bubble's been good. Uh, you know, while we're here, um, Toronto just, just missed the layup under 20 seconds. Left now, Boston's holding for the final shot. Uh, Kemba with the ball, Tatum setting a pick, walk to the basket. Mm-hmm. Oh. Layup is no good. I want to see a step back. And we got it. We got it. We got a tie up. I mean, Kemba had Man. that layup. Man, you, you got, to go right, to you got back. right to the rim. No, no, no step back. He had it right to the. He had it at the basket. That's a that's a oh yeah, I see it. For Kemba. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. That's why he's upset. Yeah. Yeah, he knows. Yeah, he, he, he knows. He knows. But yeah, Van Van Vliet, He um playing for that contract, man. He, he's trying to play hard. Yeah, man. Uh, he he's looking for a max deal himself. Um, he's definitely gonna get it from someone. Uh, Detroit, the Knicks, who knows? But there's going to be a lot of uh, suitors out there for him. Oh, definitely. It's just, I ain't messing with that Knicks stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, better. Yeah, better just build your team. And mm-mm. But if you're going to do it, I guess with his pedigree, you, it does justify it. But I wouldn't be mad. I won't be like, oh, my God, I can't believe. I, I wouldn't be mad if they did it. But we'll see. But yeah, this this series is I think it's gonna be really intriguing, especially if Denver could come in, you know. Yeah, man. Uh it, cause Jeremy Grant was hot in the third and fourth quarter, as you can see, mm-hmm. Denver went up by seven. Mm-hmm. Uh Doc calls a timeout and Paul George hits a three and they go in an eight oh run. Mm-hmm. Uh with Lou Williams in the corner, put the clips up by one and from I, I think from this point Jokic just lost all of his aggressiveness. Mm-hmm. You know, here he knocks down the mid-range jumper, mm-hmm. at the top of the key. Then we're up by two, and Kawhi was a beautiful pass. That was nice. That was that was a nice dunk. That was um, what's his name? Zubak. Zubaka, as uh, Kevin Holland called him. <laughs> but yeah, look at that nice little step back by Claw. I mean, he's. He's another one that got a nice mid-range game now. And oh, by yeah. Way, ooh, that, ooh, we went to the basket. Mm-hmm. That's what he does. He is a certified bucket getter. See, bucket. See? see how that goes? 
Mm -hmm. And then here we get the block from Kawhi with the middle finger. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, that was pretty nice. That, that was pretty nice. And Denver and Clippers go on to win game three. Uh, they're up 2 1. And back to the Toronto Boston update. Mm -hmm. was, so there was a foul on the inbounds play as they try to alley you from out of bounds. Um, they had a foul to give. So they Ooh. try to inbound again. And Siakam puts up a prayer and I almost went in. From top <laughs> of the <key>. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. It was almost open. <laughs> the back was almost open. Just to the left. Uh, pretty nice shot by Siakam. And this out of bounds play was nice. It oh, was. He tipped it. That's what it was tipped. And I thought they called a foul. Oh, okay. No, they did. No, they did call a foul on Tatum. But um, I guess they had one to give. So they had, they had to run the inbound play again. Mm hmm. So. Toronto and Boston heading to overtime. Uh, again, Toronto looking to go to game seven. Boston looking to close mm -hmm. out the series. Face Miami. Um, I do know that uh, Jake has been in our comments uh, tonight. Thank you, brother. And he's the host of... Absolutely. Yeah, you do it much better than me. You, you, yeah, hit him with it. Got it. P -p 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 Jarvis, baby. Go watch that. Yeah, man, you can catch them Thursday nights, 8 o'clock over in Wrestling Life. Uh, huge Heat fan. Um, I, I know a good friend, uh, CL Kid, Charles Martinez, big Celtic fan. So those guys, are, I know, are going to be going at it mm -hmm. if they ever meet in the uh, playoffs. But, you know, good time over there. Mm -hmm. You know, one of those guys got to be pushed. One of them got to be buried. <laughs> you know, who is going in the casket? <laughs> Ooh. Uh, man, quick baseball update. Mets almost coming back from a 6-1 lead, huh? A 6-1 deficit, excuse me. But, I mean, Baltimore's uh, yeah. been playing good ball. Yeah, good. they surprising me. Grief, yeah, I, man. I that, Ryan, like I call him, Ryan Metcalf. It's not like a damn creative player name. Um, <laughs> hell is he? But, yeah, speaking of baseball, check out our, you know, flagship, you know, Dong City, Vince, Henry. You guys do a great job along with, you know, Roberto with his clips. Go always do your things over there. We appreciate y'all. Keep doing it. You know, you know, the lab, you know, guys came back. You know, they're going to come back strong. Got some dishes that they're going to be chefing up for everybody. You know, the Audible, mm -hmm. my guys, Matt, Randy, it's awesome. Always pulling double duty. I think, Leon, I think you're going to be on there on the 15th, I think. Is it the 15th? Uh, yeah, once once the Lions uh, beat up on the Bears, looking, for, looking forward to that week one matchup. Um, matter of fact, they have a special uh, episode this Friday, uh, I believe mm -hmm. 7, 7 o'clock. Uh, mm-hmm. This Friday, uh, 7 o'clock, we're going to preview week one of the NFL. Um, those guys have been waiting a long time to do it. And once I get on there, I'll be ready to embarrass Matt. Um, oh. But <laughs> you know, it, it, it's going to be sweet. Matt. And, you know, Holy and like wow. you said, the lab came back, lab came back strong. I'm glad to see those guys come back. They got some dishes to go. Uh, Ready to be cooked up, Johnny and Matt over there in the lab. You can catch them seven o'clock right before us, uh, over in Food Life. Um, we got a great right. uh, set of shows for you. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for that Bushnell and Tompkins, Bears and Lions. Leon already shooting out the first guns. Smoke. That's we're gonna see this. I'm kind of rooting for the Lions in this one because this shit would be hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. Ooh, I, I, got the, I got the, I got the Stafford jersey ready. Oh, bringing it out. I'm bringing it out. It, it's coming. Yeah, I got. You want you want any idea what hit him? Make sure you have those. <laughs> make sure he has those shades on. You know, because it's gonna be it's gonna be shining. Just hopefully, Khalil Mack doesn't kill Max Stafford on the front. Woo, Lord, Lord, please let Max Stafford stay healthy this year. I just want to see him see him one healthy season. That's it. Even I want to see it. But yes, but, <laughs> 
Yeah, man. But you know what's even going to be funnier? Um, I, I know that the Jets face the Bills this uh, upcoming week. If Josh yes, Allen decides he wants to be a quarterback and just light the Jets up, I would throw that him. would – I mean, that would also make my day because he, he hates Josh Allen as well. So I hate him too. He's overrated. I think he's <laughs> overrated. I'm sorry. I mean, I can't rant like my dude Matt can about Josh Allen, but he's overrated. I mean – I had, like I said, I had Bills fans talking. Sorry, we're going to switch it up a little bit, but I had Bills fans talking about he could be Lamar Jackson. The fuck you can't. I don't know where the hell you get your information from. But I sit your ass down or jump off a ta- onto a table or whatever the fuck y'all do up here. But he ain't no Lamar no. Jackson. <laughs> Josh Fox and BP News, Allen. Fox News. Yeah, Fox News. <laughs> Definitely fake news. <laughs> Getting it from China. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is oh, good, man. man. Um, I, I, I love the Hoyas gear you got on. Uh, love the Thank Hoyas you. gear you got on tonight, man. Um, Thank you. Uh, I know that John Thompson was uh, late the rest of the day. Uh, I had a yes. picture of uh, AI and Ewing and Matumbo uh, carrying his coffin into the basket, uh, into the mm-hmm. into the hearse. Um, we touched a bit on it last week on the impact of. Uh, John Thompson in the community, uh, as well as in the coaching world, um, so I'd be missed. And it's a, you know, I like I say, I usually get on you for your outfits, but I, I can't do it tonight. It's a, a good job by you, man. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's definitely it's a good tribute to him, and we're gonna keep it going, man. It's rep it all year. <laughs> Word. Um, about three and a half. Minutes left to go. Uh, Toronto mm-hmm. up one, one on one, one hundred. Oh yeah, really good, really good move. Uh, we'll, we'll stay on with you to. Uh, we'll go over the game together. Uh, we'll close out with the W, WNBA. Yes. Uh, playoff start next week. Top uh, eight mm-hmm. uh, teams in the league make uh, postseason. Seven have been determined. Mm-hmm. Uh, the race for the eighth spot is between the Dallas Wings, Atlanta Dream, they're two games behind, and the Washington Mystics, they're a game behind. Uh, the they came. Well, man. Shout out to the Mystics, man. <laughs> Just missing their MVP, and they are still in it. And the team that surprised me, I guess that was the Sun, because then they start off like, were they on four? Yeah, they were 0-4, um, thought... then went through a little hot stretch, mm-hmm. and then got cold again, and uh, Alyssa Thomas and Dewana Bonner, who was named the player of a week last I'm week. Played a week. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Long time. 26-7. Uh, facts. Long time Mercury player, over to the sun for the first year, uh, proving she's a star in the, in the league, long time veteran, certified mm-hmm. bucket. Don't forget about Scholar Diggin Smith. She was named uh, West Player of the Week. I believe it was 25, 26, 5, and I don't want to say three assists. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, she's she's been a bucket getter since Notre Dame, and she she knows not just a pretty face. Like I said, she'll bust that ass too. But um, yeah, just Word. this playoffs are going to be good. I'm really going to be all in on these playoffs. I want to see what these girls can do when it comes when the the bubble lights come on. So it's gonna be the bright, the brighter lights. We have uh, the lights of a wobble, uh, as they call it. Uh, <laughs> con- congrats to Diggin Smith. She scored uh, three thousand career points. Mm-hmm. Uh, had a thirty spot last week. The Mercury were red hot. Um, they won about six in a row until uh, they lost uh, the other night, I believe, to the Sun. Yeah, I believe. I think it was the Sun. You might, I believe so. Um, but yeah, uh, Phoenix riding the hot streak. Diana looking like the goat. Who? Um, White Mama. Shout out to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, she's she's just she's so good. <laughs> nice three in the corner uh, by Toronto. Uh, uh, they tied it up 104 apiece, under two minutes to go. Uh, mm-hmm. We got Tatum working on the low block. Shot by Smart. Oh, no foul call. Lowry with the rebound. 
and a minute and a half to go, Toronto coming down the court. Boston's um, rotations suck. Yeah, we had questioned their their big man depth way back when, and this is where I thought Toronto would have had the edge with Gasol and Ibaka. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ibaka played Ibaka played well, but it's it's Gasol that's killing him, and he now he's been out of rotation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they just have no oh no whoa. But yeah, that one that yeah, I don't get it. You know, you gotta put this guy wow. If he's playing bad, he's playing bad. It's kinda like, you know, PJ Tucker, put Chandler and put your big bodies in because it seems like more of these guys are trying to get to the rim and you no rim protection. It's just easy bucket, easy two. Or it's just gonna be a foul and you're getting to the line. So it's definitely but yeah, Kemba. Yeah, I want to see Kemba make some big shots. That's the do the step back. Did I miss it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that step back is. Uh, man, that <laughs> it's just crazy. That step back never gets old. It's just, it's just a no. one hard cut back, and then I'm man. Ooh. Ooh, that I don't want. Come on, boss. I don't, don't want to see no. Games, so Norman. Man. So Norman, Norman Powell knocks down two free throws. Jason Tatum comes mm-hmm. down court. And turns the ball over. I think you're at the free throw point, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Jason Tatum uh, got caught up, had a turnover, and Van Fleet missed the three. Uh, under a minute to go, Toronto up by two. Mm-hmm. Uh, pick up top for Kemba Walker. Looks like uh, nobody's on him. Walker missed the three. Marcus Smart. Uh, nice rebound, tried to save it. Um, so we're at about 37 seconds left to go. Uh, Toronto mm-hmm. with the ball, Van Fleet uh, dribbling uh, at the top of the key. About 10 seconds left in the shot clock. Holding for one. Fred to the basket. Nice attempt. Oh, totally missed that one. And Jalen Brown with the rebound and got fouled. So about 20 seconds left, Toronto up two. Uh, we'll mm-hmm. see what happens here. Um, uh, yeah, you definitely uh, buff. Back, you definitely on me. Oh yeah. Um, back to the ladies for a second. I was a uh, Dallas holding on to that eighth spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, a Goomba Wale dropping thirty nine um, on Sunday with mm-hmm. the game tying three to, to uh, send them in overtime. Yeah, that was I mean, nice. I actually saw that clip. Yeah, league leading score. Uh, I'm a big Agumba Wale fan. Mm-hmm. I mean, I compared her step back pull up game to Westbrook, but you know she she's been blowing all season. And I know I know we say this a lot, but she's definitely a, a certified bucket getter. Mm-hmm. For sure, man. That that was a that's a nice young team too, man. That's. They said you told me about them, so um, you're the expert on that team. <laughs> I knew Hoover Wally, I knew her, but other than that, I'm just yeah, they're definitely a nice little young team that can make some strides. Yeah, man. Um, look at these highlights here. I mean, she uh, quick first step, um, quick quick shot release, and she gets uh, her shot off from anywhere yeah. on the court. Look at that. That was nice. Yeah, quicker than James Harden. <laughs> she's sad, but boom. Yeah, man. I mean, yeah. she shoots the ball from more or less any angle. Mm-hmm. The inbound play for Boston and a, a foul call. Um, I'm not sure you're going to get free throws. Jalen Brown, they tried to alley you from out of bounds. Like Marcus Smart, alley you to Jalen Brown. Foul call, and we got John Brown at the line for two. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Like, she's bringing them back into this game right now. She's about to hit him with the step. Yep, there it is. Boom. Yeah. Yeah, man, that step back is legal. Yeah, this is it right here. This is money. Look at that. Separate. All that space. Yeah, man. The separation she got from a defender on, on, on the jump stop, wild. That was nice, man. That, mm, I mean, you saw nowhere near them, nowhere near her. Excuse me. 
Look at it. She was toast. Toast. Butter on the biscuit. <laughs> mm. And then, play. yeah, man, then taking over the game in overtime, knock down another three. I mean, she 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 shoots from a high clip. Um, she also shoots a high volume, but mm-hmm. her, her percentages are, are are really good this year. As you know, the um, league leading score. Um, mm-hmm. This young team is on the verge of something with uh, Sabali. Uh, she missed some time, but this was a much needed game uh, for the Dallas Wings as they were competing with the Mystics for that final mm-hmm. playoff spot. So. Goomba Wale in the clutch. It's nice to see there. For sure. Um, so, Jalen Brown knocked down two free throws. Um, the team time? tied at 106. How much time we got left? Uh, about, you know, 14 seconds. Yeah, right. About 14 seconds. Um, so, we'll keep it here with you until the uh, – end here uh you have any uh parting words for our audience well, thank you for listening as always we appreciate everybody always chiming in jake you were big tonight in the comments we appreciate it everybody else that joined in you know keep those views coming you know we always want your input keep posting you know um check out all our other life podcasts we all you know do it for you guys and once again leon Always been good. Great conversations. You know, F the Nets. <laughs> Steve Nash. Now, okay, good luck to Steve Nash. That's my guy. Um, hopefully, he, he does well there. And, you know, thank you. Oh, man. No, no doubt. Um, Serrano missed the three at the buzzer. We're going to go to double overtime. So we're gonna check this. We're gonna take it out. We're gonna create a thread. We're gonna create an overtime thread. So we're gonna get in there, talk some shit. So I can be caught up. So I can actually look at the damn TV. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. My man is struggling over here. But uh, I am again, over there. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm trying to turn around and uh, look at the camera. Yeah, you, you're struggling. I'm gonna help no, you out, it's, brother. It's tough. <laughs> But uh, again, th- thank you guys for tuning in. You can catch this uh, on Anchor, on Spotify, Apple, iTunes, uh, uh, or on YouTube by subscribing to the Life Group podcast channel. Uh, you can catch this episode as well as our previous ones, as well as um, all of the other Life Group podcasts. Um, thank you again for tuning in. And uh, yes, you know, see you guys again next week. And until next time, you know, ball out. Ball out. Trying to get buckwild over here.